Hello everyone. Welcome to Basic Electronics Tutorials. In this video, I'm going to discuss about the working principle of a bridge rectifier. Please note, a bridge rectifier is a full wave rectifier. Let us start the discussion with the definition for a rectifier. A rectifier is a device that converts alternating current, that is AC, to direct current, that is DC. So what is a bridge rectifier? A bridge rectifier is a device that converts alternating current to direct current in both the positive as well as the negative half cycles of the input supply. Please note, I have previously discussed half wave rectifier as well as center tapped full wave rectifier. I highly recommend you to watch those videos and I'll leave the link of those videos in the video description below. Coming back to the third point here, since this rectifier converts one form of energy that is AC to another form that is DC, this is also referred to as a AC to DC power converter. Figure 1 here indicates the circuit diagram for a bridge rectifier. The primary of the transformer has a voltage equal to Vp. The secondary transformer voltage is Vs. It has four diodes D1, D2, D3 and D4 and they are connected in such a fashion that they create a H-bridge. To understand the working principle of the bridge rectifier, we need to analyze this circuit during the positive as well as the negative half cycles of the input supply but separately. So let me start the analysis for the positive half cycle of the input supply. During the positive half cycle of the input supply, the top terminal of the primary will be positive and the bottom terminal will be negative. Please note we are talking about AC supply. The same polarity will be transferred to the secondary of the transformer as well. For understanding this circuit easily, what I will do is, I will give notations to the nodes of the secondary of the transformer. Let the top edge of the secondary be point A, the top corner of the bridge be point B, the right corner of the bridge be point C, the left corner be point D, the bottom corner of the bridge be point E and the bottom edge of the secondary be point F. During the positive off cycle of the input supply, point A is at a positive potential. So the same potential will be carried to point B. So I can say point B is at a positive potential. Once again, the same potential is carried to diodes D1 and D3. So diode D1 will have a positive potential across its anode and diode D3 will have a positive potential across its cathode. Since a positive potential appears across one side of the diode, the other side must be negative. Therefore, the diode D1 cathode is negative, whereas diode D3 anode is negative. Coming to the point F, which is the bottom edge of the secondary of the transformer, it is at negative potential. Therefore, point E will also be at negative potential. The same potential is carried to anode of diode D4 and cathode of diode D2. Therefore, the cathode of diode D4 will be at positive potential and anode of diode D2 will be at positive potential. Now that we have established the potential across the two terminals of each of the diodes, let us understand which one will be forward biased and which will be reverse biased. To understand that, let me take a very simple diode symbol at the bottom of the page. This is anode and this is cathode. We know that a diode is a unidirectional current carrying device and it only conducts in one direction that is from anode to cathode. So this is the current direction across the diode. And a diode will be forward bias if and only if the anode is at a positive potential and the cathode is at a negative potential. In simple words, when the potential difference across anode and cathode is positive, the diode will be forward biased. So, coming to the diode D1 here, look at the anode, it is at positive potential. Look at the cathode, it is at negative potential. So this satisfies the condition for forward biasing the diode and therefore diode D1 will turn on. 
Coming to diode D3, you note that the positive potential appears across the cathode and the negative potential appears across its anode. This is exactly the reverse as that of what is required to turn on a diode and therefore diode D3 will be reverse biased. Coming to diode D2, we note that a positive potential appears across its anode and a negative potential across its cathode, therefore it will turn on. And lastly, for diode D4, positive potential appears across the cathode and a negative potential appears across the anode, therefore this will be reverse biased. So, what we now understand is that in the positive half cycle of the input supply, diode D1 and diode D2 are forward biased and diodes D3 and D4 are reverse biased. An equivalent circuit for this is shown in figure 2 here. Let us assume that all of the four diodes are identical in nature and they are also ideal diodes. So, when a diode is ideal, the voltage required to turn on the diode which is the threshold voltage is 0 and the forward resistance offered by the same is also 0. Further, when an ideal diode is forward biased, it will act as a short circuit. In a similar fashion, when a ideal diode is reverse biased, it will act as an open circuit. That is what is indicated in figure 2 here. If you look at diode D1, it is turned on and therefore it is replaced with a short circuit. The same is shown for diode D2 as well. We can see that in the diagonal opposite corner. Coming to diodes D3 and D4, we have established that they are off. Therefore, they should be shown with an open circuit. Let me now very quickly write the notations for the secondary of the transformer here. Okay. Now, we know that the current direction always starts from the positive terminal of the source. So, the current across the secondary starts from point A. So, it flows from point A to point B. At point B, it has two options, one through diode D1, another one through diode D3. But diode D3 is currently off. So, the current now takes the path of diode D1 till it reaches point C. At point C, once again, it has two options, one through the load, another one through diode D4. But since diode D4 is off, the only possible way for the current to flow is through the load and so the current direction now moves from point C to point D. This is also shown in this indication here. At point D, since diode D3 is off, the only way the current can flow is through diode D2 and it reaches point E. From point E, then it reaches point F and then from point F to point A. This is the current flow across the secondary circuit during the positive half cycles of the input supply. Let this way of flow of current across the secondary be termed positive. So, the load current in the positive half cycle of the input supply is said to be positive. Let us now analyze the output voltage. Please note, point A is at positive potential, therefore point B will also be at positive potential and since diode D3 is off and D1 is on, point C will be at a positive potential. That is what is shown across the load resistance RL here. In a similar fashion, point F which is the bottom terminal of the secondary is at negative potential, therefore point E will also be at negative potential. And since D4 is off and diode D2 is on, point D will be at a negative potential. This is also shown across the other edge of the load resistance. Let this way of appearing of voltage across the load be termed positive. So, the output voltage is also positive. Please note, I have assumed ideal diode. In an ideal diode, as I said, there is no voltage drop when it is conducting. So, the output voltage in the positive off cycle of the input supply is simply equal to the input voltage. So, let me be very specific, it is plus Vs. So, output voltage is plus Vs and output current, since I have assumed purely resistive load, will simply be V0 divided by R. We will use these values when we go for waveform analysis. 
Right, that is about the analysis of the circuit during the positive half cycle of the input supply. Let us now come back to the main circuit and understand the working of the circuit during the negative half cycle of the input supply. Now, during the negative half cycle, the polarities across the primary and secondary must change. So, let me just change them here itself. The top edge of the primary is negative and the bottom edge is now positive. The same polarity will also be carried to the secondary. So, point A across the secondary is now at negative potential and point F is at positive potential. Now, since point A is at negative potential, the same potential is carried to point B. So, point B is at negative potential. The same applies for point F and E. Therefore, point E will be now at positive potential. Coming back to point B here. Since it is at negative potential, the same potential appears across anode of diode D1 and cathode of diode D3. Therefore, the alternating phases will have positive potential. So, diode D1 cathode will be positive and diode D3 anode will be positive. Coming to point E, since it is at positive potential, diode D4 will receive a positive potential across its anode and diode D2 will receive a positive potential across its cathode. Therefore, their alternating phases will receive negative potential. So, D4 cathode is negative and D2 anode is negative. Now, as previously discussed, a diode must have a positive potential across its anode and cathode terminals to turn on. Otherwise, it will be reverse passed. So, if I come to diode D1 here, look at that very carefully. The anode potential is negative cathode potential is positive. This potential will drive the diode D1 into reverse bias state and therefore it will turn off. Coming to diode D3, it has a positive potential at its anode and negative potential across its cathode, therefore it will turn on. Coming to D2, it has a positive potential across its cathode and negative potential across its anode, so it will also be reverse biased. And lastly, diode D4, has a positive potential across its anode and a negative potential across its cathode. Therefore, it will be forward bias and goes into on condition. So, during the negative half cycle of the input supply, D1 and D2 are off, D3 and D4 are on. An equivalent circuit is shown in figure 3 here. You can see that D1 and D2 are shown as open circuits, D3 and D4 are shown as short circuits. Let me now quickly write down the notations once again. Okay, let me analyze the output current direction now. As previously said, point F is at positive potential and therefore the current starts from point F now. So it starts from F, it flows to E. At point E, it has two paths through D2 and D4, but D2 is off, so it takes the D4 path. When it reaches point C, once again it has to pass through the load and through D1, but D1 is off, so it flows in the direction of the load. So you can see that the current direction in the negative off cycle is exactly the same as that of during the positive off cycle. At point D, once again it has to pass through D2 and D3, but D2 is off, so it takes D3. When it reaches point B, since diode D1 is off, it will take the path to point A. And from point A, it once again flows towards point F. This is the current direction during the negative off cycle. Please note, what is very important to us is the direction of current through the load. We note that the direction of current in the negative off cycle is exactly the same as that of during the positive off cycle. So, what I will say is I0 is still positive. Let us now analyze the output voltage waveform. Previously, when we were discussing the positive off cycle, please note, we said the output voltage is positive because point C, which is the right side edge of the load, was at positive potential and point D, which is the left side edge of the load, was at negative potential. This is, by convenience, positive output voltage. Let us see what happens during the negative off cycle. During the negative off cycle, as said, point F is at positive potential. So, point E will be at positive potential, diode D4 is conducting and therefore, point C will have positive potential. 
Coming to the top edge of the secondary, point A is at negative potential. Therefore, point B will be at negative potential. Since diode D1 is off, point D will be now at negative potential. So, if you look at it very carefully, you will note that it is once again the same as what we obtained during the positive off cycle. So, the output voltage is also positive. But something very strange happens here. Even though we say the output voltage is positive, you must note we are currently analyzing the negative half cycle of the input supply. So, what has happened here is the negative part of the input voltage is now converted into positive output voltage. This is what is actually AC to DC conversion. So, if I have to very exactly give you what is the value of the output voltage, then I have to say that it is equal to minus V secondary. This is the voltage across the secondary of the transformer. The current does not change, it is still V0 divided by R. Please remember this, the output voltage during the negative off cycle of the input supply is minus of the secondary voltage. That is, the negative off cycle across the secondary is converted to positive off cycle across the load. That is what happens in AC to DC converter. Right, with that, we have now analyzed the working principle of the bridge rectifier in both the positive as well as the negative half cycles of the input supply. Let us now move on to analyze the waveforms for the circuit. The first set of waveforms that you are looking at at the very top is the input voltage. You should note that we have shown two cycles of input. But please note the waveform is not for the primary transformer voltage, it is the secondary transformer voltage. This is very important to note. Generally, the representation for Vs is equal to Vm sin omega t, where Vm is the maximum value of the input voltage. And if you look at the waveform during the positive off cycle, the peak value of the input voltage is shown as Vm. The same applies for the negative off cycle. So, the negative peak is minus Vm. Let us come to the important part, which is for the output voltage and output current. We have already established that during the positive half cycle of the input supply, output voltage is equal to plus Vs and output current I0 is equals to V0 divided by R. Coming to the waveform here, which is for the output voltage, please note, the pink color one shown here is for output voltage. So, as I said, the output voltage is equal to input voltage. Since we have assumed ideal diodes, the waveform during the positive off cycle of the input supply, that is between 0 to pi, exactly replicates at the output voltage waveform between 0 to pi. Please note, this will only happen if the diodes are assumed to be ideal. If I consider any practical diode, there will be a small voltage drop across the diode. Therefore, the maximum output voltage will not reach Vm. Let me now move on to the negative half cycle of the input supply, which is from pi to 2 pi. Once again, in our previous analysis, we have found out that during the negative half cycle of the input supply, the output voltage is minus Vs and the output current is simply V0 divided by R. But what is most important to us is V0 equals minus Vs. So, the negative half cycle of the input supply, what is shown between pi to 2 pi across the input, now simply changes its polarity and appears as it is across the output. So, the negative half cycle of the input supply is simply converted to the positive half cycle between pi to 2 pi. This is what V0 equal to minus Vs means. So, if you look at this very carefully, the input to the circuit is AC, but the output is DC. That is why we call this as a rectifier. Let us now look into the waveforms for the voltages across the diodes. Now, we know that in this particular circuit, diode D1 and D2 conduct together and they conduct only during the positive half cycle of the input supply. The same can be said about diodes D3 and D4 and they conduct only during the negative half cycle of the input supply. As I said, we have assumed the diodes to be ideal. So, when the diodes conduct, they will appear as short circuit. So, when you come to the waveform for voltage across diode D1 and D2, you will note that between 0 to pi, which is the positive half cycle, diodes D1 and D2 conduct. 
Therefore, the voltage across them is zero. Why? Because now they appear as short circuits. During the negative half cycle of the input supply, diodes D1 and D2 are open circuited. So, the voltage across the diodes D1 and D2 is exactly equal to the input voltage. So, the complete negative half cycle of the input appears across the diodes D1 and D2 between pi and 2 pi. Coming to diodes D3 and D4 now, during the positive half cycle of the input supply, diodes D3 and D4 are off. And please note now the voltage across the input appears reversely across them. So, the voltage across the diodes D3 and D4 is minus Vs. It must be noted it is minus Vs. However, during the negative half cycle, diodes D3 and D4 conduct. Therefore, the voltage across them is zero because now they will act as short circuits. Right. That is the analysis of waveforms for a bridge rectifier. Now, I will move on to the mathematical analysis of the section. I will start the mathematical analysis by finding out the average output voltage across the load. Please note that the average output voltage for a full wave rectifier is equal to the DC component V0 and is given by V0 equals 1 divided by 2 pi because we are supposed to consider one full cycle integral 0 to 2 pi because that is the limits for one full cycle. What we are integrating? We are integrating the output voltage. So, V0 omega t d omega t. Since we have analyzed positive and negative off cycle separately, let us split the integration between 0 to pi and pi to 2 pi and write the equation for the same. That is what is done in this equation here. So, the integral now is from 0 to pi plus pi to 2 pi. Let us come back to the waveforms to understand what is the output voltage during positive off cycle. We already have learned that during the positive half cycle of the input supply, output voltage is equal to input voltage which is Vs. And I already informed that Vs is equals to Vm sin omega t. So, what I will do is I will come back and for the positive half cycle, I will write V0 of omega t is equals to Vm sin omega t, then we have d omega t. Coming back to the waveforms once again, let us understand what is the output voltage during the negative half cycle. During the negative half cycle of the input supply, output voltage is equals to minus input voltage. That is, it is minus Vm sin omega t. So, when I come back to the derivation, during the negative half cycle of the input supply, that is between pi to 2 pi, I will write the V0 omega t as minus Vm sin omega t, then we have d omega t. Let us now take Vm which is common in both the first as well as second parts of the integral outside the integral. So, this is placed here. Then we have integral 0 to pi sin omega t. Let us integrate. Integration of sin omega t is minus cos omega t. So, this is done here. The limits are 0 to pi. In a very similar fashion, we have this minus symbol put here and integration of sin omega t is minus cos omega t. Let us now take the minus symbol outside and apply the limit. So, it will be minus of cos pi minus cos 0. Then we have minus and minus here. So, this will be plus. Then we have cos 2 pi minus cos pi. Let us substitute the values for this. Cos pi is minus 1. Cos 0 is plus 1 cos 2 pi is plus 1 and cos pi is minus 1. Simplifying this, you will obtain the value for the average output voltage as 2 Vm by pi. Please note, this is exactly the double as that of a half wave rectifier. Let us now find the RMS value of the output voltage. The equation for RMS value of the output voltage is pretty simple. All you need to do is to simply rewrite the equation for the DC voltage, square the component that is being integrated, so it will become V0 square, then put a square root for the complete equation. So the equation here is 1 divided by 2 pi, integral 0 to 2 pi, V0 square omega t, d omega t, whole to the power 1 by 2. I am going to once again split the integral between 0 to pi and pi to 2 pi. This is done here. 
Once again, I'm going to substitute the values for V0 during positive and negative half cycle. As I said, V0 during positive half cycle is Vm sin omega t and V0 during negative half cycle is minus Vm sin omega t. Now, there is something very interesting here. What? The square. Look at the negative symbol and look at the square. Since there is a square, the negative symbol will be eliminated. So, what will remain here is Vm sin omega t whole square plus Vm sin omega t whole square. Therefore, instead of integrating it separately, what I will do is, I will simply write 2 multiplied by Vm square sin square omega t d omega t. Let us once again take Vm square outside the integral, which is written here. We have sin square omega t, but sin square omega t cannot be integrated. So, what I will do is, I will write it in terms of 1 minus cos 2 omega t divided by 2. Let me now take this 2 to the denominator here. So, what remains is simply 1 minus cos 2 omega t. Let me now apply the integrals to these two terms. So, we have integral 0 to pi d omega t minus integral 0 to pi cos 2 omega t. Integration of d omega t is omega t. Integration of cos 2 omega t is sin 2 omega t divided by 2. Let us apply the limits. So, this will be pi minus 0 and the other one would be sin 2 pi minus sin 0. We know that sin 0 is 0 and sin of any pi is also 0. So, this complete term reduces to 0. So, what remains from this part is only pi and that is written here. Simplifying this, you will obtain the RMS value of the output voltage as Vm divided by root 2. Let us now quickly run through the other parameters. I will start with the average output current and this is simply equal to the average output voltage V0 divided by the load resistance R. We have previously found the average output voltage as 2 Vm by pi. Therefore, the average output current is 2 Vm by pi R. In a very similar fashion, the output RMS current is output RMS voltage divided by load resistance R. Output RMS voltage is Vm by root 2. Therefore, output RMS current is Vm by root 2 R. Then, the average power produced by the input supply is equal to Pi equals Vsis, where Vs is the RMS value of the input voltage and Is is the RMS value of the input current. Please note, both of them are across the secondary of the transformer. Then, the average power absorbed by the load is given by P0 equals VRMS and IRMS, where VRMS is the output RMS voltage and IRMS is the output RMS current. So, the power factor of the circuit is given by VRMS into IRMS, which is the average power absorbed by the load, divided by VSIS, which is the power produced by the input supply. Coming to the ripple factor, Please note, ripple factor will determine how well a rectifier converts AC to DC. And this is given by the formula, ripple factor equals square root of VRMS by V0 whole square minus 1. VRMS is Vm by root 2, V0 is 2 Vm by pi. Substitute and simplify, you will obtain the value of ripple factor as 0.4834. Then we have the efficiency of the rectifier, which is also commonly called as rectification efficiency. And this is simply the ratio of output DC power, which is PDC, to input AC power, which is PAC. PDC can be written simply as V0 I0 and PAC can be written as VSIS. But in the next equation here, the approach is a little different. Instead of writing V0 I0 and VSIS, what you have done is, we have represented V0 in terms of I0, which is simply I0 divided by R. The same is done for Vs as well. So, the equation is I0 square divided by R divided by I RMS square divided by R. Substitute the values for I0 and I RMS and simplify, you will obtain the rectification efficiency as 0 0.8105, that is 81.05%. It must be noted, this is the maximum achievable value. Let us now move on to the form factor. 
form factor is a measure of the shape of the output voltage and is given by form factor is equal to VRMS by V0. VRMS is Vm by root 2, V0 is 2 Vm by pi. So, you will find the value of form factor as 1.1107. And lastly, we have the transformer utilization factor. The transformer utilization factor of a rectifier circuit can be defined as the ratio of DC power available at the load resistor to the AC rating of the secondary coil of the transformer. Simply, it is PDC divided by VSIS. Right. With that, we have come to the end of this discussion on the working principle and mathematical analysis of a bridge rectifier. If you like this video, kindly like and share this video and subscribe to my channel for more tutorials on basic electronics. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.